Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about diabetic neuropathy. This is something that is becoming more common and if you have diabetic neuropathy or if you know somebody with diabetic neuropathy, my goal with this video is to help you understand what's causing it and I don't want anybody to ever have to experience this again. So we're going to be talking about how to prevent it but we're also going to be talking about why it occurs and then talk a little bit at the end of the video about how we treat it here in the office. Now there are many different causes of neuropathy, but diabetic neuropathy is about 30% of the cases that we see here in the office. So we could say that it is the majority of uh, neuropathy that we see. And a lot of the times this presents as burning, tingling, um, sharp sensations, electric like shocks, um, numbness, tingling in the hands or the feet, and it can present in either one, it doesn't matter. But um, what, how it typically happens is that people will start to have a little discomfort, maybe they have increased sensitivity off the start in their feet or in their hands, and then they can't you know, get restful sleep, it really hurts them when they walk, they have heaviness in their legs, that feeling when they walk, or they feel weak in the legs, they notice balance issues because those nerves aren't working correctly. It can really affect your quality of life. And that's what we see. The end stages, the worst case scenario of this is that it can end in amputation or permanent disability, walkers, wheelchairs, those sorts of things. We just had a patient in one month that was able to uh, stop using hurricane. And that was a huge success. That doesn't happen with everybody, but it does happen sometimes. And so setting appropriate expectations is always my goal when it comes to uh, your care. But we do see in her case was a di uh, diabetic neuropathy. And so let's go ahead and let's break this down. So diabetes, everybody knows what causes diabetes. It's elevated blood sugars. And over time, that causes damage to the nerves. So that's what most people tend to think, but they don't know about the other consequences of elevated blood sugar. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. Now, this mainly occurs due to what's called glycation. And glycation, uh, what it creates is advanced glycation end products. And these uh, glycation end products, they bind to fats, they bind to carbohydrates and proteins. And they also bind to uh, the nerves, the vascularity, they can bind to organs, they basically can bind to anything. And when they bind to those types of tissues, they end up causing inflammation in them. And so glycation is more prominent when you have increased blood sugar. So there's a correlation between the two. The higher blood sugars, the more glycation or the more damage you're going to get to these tissues. So controlling blood sugar is the number one thing. Now, there are many ways to do this. We typically do it through nutritional interventions and through supplements like alpha-lipoic acid, berberine. One key thing to mention, just real quick while I'm on the subject, is that if you are taking supplements and you don't notice a benefit from it, if you're like, oh, this isn't working, it's two things. And it's either you're not taking a therapeutic dose because one, this is just an example, this isn't totally accurate, but it's one uh, milligram of ashwagandha will help with sleep. Three milligrams or five milligrams will actually help with anxiety. And 20 milligrams will actually help boost testosterone in men. So there are different dosages for different clinical responses depending on what you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to control blood sugars and that's where your practitioner or somebody else can help you, a nutritionist, to figure out if my blood sugars are running around the 200s, low 200s, it's going to take a lot more than if they're running around in the 160s. Because it, it doesn't make sense that I use the same dosage for the same person if they have a different response and if they're having a different issue. So really take that into consideration. Same thing with berberine or if you're uh, using any type of herbals. All of those correlate to um, different therapeutic dosages and also different therapeutic effects. 
So with this, like I was saying a minute ago, these blood sugars, these sugar molecules will bind to proteins, lipids, which are fats, and carbs. And when they do that, you can't use them and they are basically deactivated. So it binds to them and then it prevents them from getting utilized to carry out muscle synthesis or to develop hormone synthesis or for energy synthesis, okay? And so what happens if you have a lot of fatigue, then that can be one of the reasons that your blood sugars may be too high, preventing causing um, the prevention of proper nutrient absorption. But they will also bind to the nerve endings and they will prevent them from conducting a proper signal when it comes to numbness, but they can also cause aberrant signals, especially if they're not getting the uh, proteins and lipids and carbs that they need in order to repair the neural tissue around it or the myelin sheath, that will eventually start to degenerate. And this is why it can take years for this to occur. Sometimes we see it occurring, you know, as quick as one year, but sometimes it can take up to 10 to 20 years to get to this end product, just depending on what other factors there are. But we know that it does affect the nerve, and that's what most people think is that it just affects the nerve. It's just a nerve disease. Neuropathy is only the nerve, but that isn't the truth. A lot of the times, this is something that we find in about 60 to 70 percent of our patients in the office, is that it also affects the vascularity. Because what will happen is, and that's why they're saying that heart disease is more linked to sugars than it is cholesterol now, because these sugars are causing inflammation in the blood vessel and cholesterol comes and binds to it. And so these AGEs, what happens is that they will build up over time and they will actually block blood flow. And that's more so in the microvascularity in your hands and your feet. But also this glycation process won't allow the microvasculature to heal or regenerate in the hands and the feet because it is smaller and it is more susceptible. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit later. But that is one of the reasons we have a lot of our patients come in and they say that they have cold hands or cold feet or they suspect, suspect poor circulation, but they've had a vascular study, but the vascular study said that it was normal, but they're not testing the microvasculature, which is so important because the, the di there's a big difference between your aorta and the microvasculature in your feet, depending on the, the vascularity problems. And so uncovering if that is the issue, which, like I said, in about three-fourths of our cases, it is, it has to be addressed. So it's not only a nutrition and supplemental component to it, it's also a regeneration component to restore. Because it would be great you know, um, if you didn't have any more damage, but you're probably still going to have the same amount of pain. You're probably still going to have the same amount of discomfort that you um, are having right now. And most people want to get better. And that's where the medications, they don't regenerate blood flow. They don't regenerate the nerves. Um, most of the time you don't get any dietary counseling from, you know, your MD or neurologist or orthopedist or podiatrist, whoever's diagnosed it. But that's just a little bit of rent, and that's just what we see. That is not all of them. I have to, you know, put a disclaimer in there. There are some great doctors out there, but typically they don't focus on this stuff. Now, this, uh, these AGEs, like we talked about, it affects the nerves. It affects the blood flow. This one is so critical, and I have to describe it this way, that if I don't allow you to breathe or eat, what would happen? You would die. And so... If these nerves, it, it's a chicken or the egg situation. Is it the nerves or is it the blood flow? For me, most of the time, it's this blood flow is causing the nerve damage. Because if you can't get oxygen and nutrients to these nerves, there's no way that they can heal or they can function normally. Another factor with these AGEs and this glycation process is oxidative stress. So with this oxidative stress, you're basically rusting from the inside out is the easiest way for me to describe it. Because if you have your car that sits out in the field over time and as the paint chips off or as like the myelin sheath gets stripped off the nerves, you're going to get the rusting of that and it's going to degenerate over time. And the more exposure and the more ox, um, oxidation, the, obviously the faster it's going to degenerate. So that's a key component. 
The next thing is inflammation. A lot of these seed oils that most people are consuming, a lot of these artificial sugars, all of this refined sugar, it's, it's very inflammatory in high amounts. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't ever need sugar, you can't ever have sugar. It just means that your body isn't adapted to handle that amount. In, in my honest opinion, other people have, can have different opinions about that. But um, it does cause a lot of inflammation. I see this more so due to seed oils. And I have another video uh, about seed oils, the eight most toxic seed oils that you need to be looking out for when it comes to your diet. So go watch that video because, and just write them down because it's, it's really good information. Next is altered protein function. So like we talked about, proteins are very important for repairing the myelin sheath, carrying out, um, you know, reparative processes in the blood tissue, in the uh, blood vascularity, in the muscle tissue, in the connective tissue. And if you don't have that, and if you're not rebuilding as fast as you're breaking down, that's called degeneration. And then here, alter nerve signals. So they will actually cause those burning, tingling, numbness, electric light shocks, tingling, um, I already said that, increased sensation. Um, there, are, there are a multitude of sensations that, that can occur with that. And it all comes back to this glycation process and these AGs. So now there are, like I said, there are many different types of neuropathy, but when we're talking about peripheral neuropathy specifically, it occurs in the eye because you have very small blood vessels in your eye and that's what is called retinopathy. Then it affects the hands and the foot. These are the main areas. Now you can have neuropathies. You can have like a mono neuropathy in your back or your forearm or your shoulder, but when we're talking about diabetic neuropathy specifically, and this is very important for differential, is that you're most likely going to have it in both hands and both feet. It's very rare that you're going to only have it in one. Most of the time, those are from like a surgery or a car accident or a trauma uh, that you have it in, in one uh, arm or one leg. Um, and then diabetic neuropathy is, is a big one, so it will affect your vision uh, as you go on. Okay. So I hope that helps you understand uh, a little bit more about diabetic neuropathy. Let's, let's end it guys, you know, like share this with your family and friends because, you know, I see too many people suffering from this. And, you know, if I was able to treat, you know, 50,000 people a day, I still don't think that I would make much headway. But if I can educate and share this information, hopefully you all can understand why this process is occurring. If you have it, or if you know somebody who has it, share this video with them, tell them to watch this. And then I can make another video talking about more depth and how to fix it, but just control your blood sugars. Go check out some of my other videos about diet. This is in the neuropathy playlist, so go check that out. And uh, I'll make another video talking about chemo-induced neuropathies next. So make sure you subscribe to the, to, ah, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all next time. Bye.